We did it. We have reached the end of new and a bit alarming. And oh boy, has it been torturous. Fun! I mean fun. <laughs> nah, it was a lot of hard work, but as always with this kind of thing, we learned a lot. For the end of this series, we just wanted to be a bit more casual and talk about things that didn't fit into the other videos. Some good, most bad, often nitpicky. None of these things would have really fixed the movie, but sometimes I think it definitely would have made it a better one. Oh my god, the yellow dress. Why? Why does it look like they stapled a bunch of napkins to her chest? So the yellow dress from the original movie is based on Audrey Hepburn's dress from A Roman Holiday where she plays a literal princess. And somehow it still fits into the presumed time period in which Beauty and the Beast takes place. This one they were just like, well Emma doesn't want to wear a corset so let's make a couture gown even though everybody else wears a period costume. I don't understand it. You can have both fashion and function. I just... why? There's a part in the screenplay during Be Our Guest where it reads, The grand finale is pure Bollywood, punctuated by explosions of candy-colored powders. Bollywood. So that answers my question about why in the ever-loving fuck was Cogsworth wearing a turban in Be Our Guest. I did not think of Bollywood during that scene. So random. <laughs> Dan Stevens' hairpiece needs to be burned in a dumpster fire. Side note, we realized after watching Sky High that Stephen Strait's hair was his real hair. That wasn't a wig that I made fun of, and I'm sorry. But this thing that Dan Stevens wears just needs to be burned in a dumpster fire. Don't you just love how Belle wanders around in this potentially great choreographed scene? Don't you love how they all just stand around and don't do anything. I will say that Gaston's leather coat fit Luke Evans very well. And the character, but mostly Luke Evans. They make fun of her for asking a hairbrush for its name, but like... Is everything here alive? What's your name? <laughs> that is a hairbrush. <laughs> Why are they making fun of her? How the f*** is she supposed to know? We noticed in doing the research for this series that there were very few women behind the camera and the movie kind of shows that. Most of the women that we found in the crew list were in costume design because of course they were. I'm not saying that women shouldn't be costume designers, I'm just saying that they should also be directors and writers like Linda Wolverton. Hello? What a revolutionary idea. Let's hire a woman to write a movie about a woman. How could they expect us to take their promises of intersectionality seriously without actually doing any of the work in front of or behind the camera? There's a really sloppy bit of editing in the bookshop scene where Père Robert says, Bon voyage. And the bell turns around and says awkwardly, Bye. It's just, gee, I'm so glad that the editors left that in because I never would have known that she left that scene and that weird churchy place, if they hadn't included that bit in there, it's great editing. <laughs> Maybe this was just a me thing, but I felt like a lot of the architecture felt very empty. Like the West Wing in the 1991 film is full of furniture that he's torn apart and portraits that he's ripped apart and it's indicative of the mental state that he's in. There's nothing in the West Wing here. There's nothing for Belle to really like run from except him. And that doesn't work for me. Why wouldn't you fill things up? I loved how half-heartedly the movie tried to address the whole Stockholm Syndrome controversy, which we've talked about and Lindsay Ellis made a really great video about. Like if Belle just mentioned after they danced that she wasn't free, it somehow made it feminist. Can anybody be happy if they aren't free? Like, why are you still there? I didn't realize you were there because you were still adhering to the prisoner agreement. That equality needs to kind of be there for the romance to work. <laughs> One thing I really did like, as you may have noticed from earlier videos, is that Kevin Klein was the best choice for Maurice. In this situation, anyway. Because, like, if Belle had been played by a woman of color, I would have liked to have seen a man of color play Maurice. I loved my violin playing coat rack. We didn't even really talk about how we felt about the Enchantress being an active player in the movie. On the one hand, I like the idea of having the Enchantress be an active player in the story, but on the other, I wonder if that negatively affected Belle's activism in the story. I don't really think it did. I just... I wonder if there's a correlation there. Some of the other Beauty and the Beast versions that I've read 
involve the Enchantress a lot more. Liz Braswell does it wonderfully. I'm just saying. So good. Why didn't they have Liz Braswell come and write this movie? She at least understands the point of the movie. All right, so Angela Lansbury has a Cockney accent for Mrs. Potts in the animated movie, and for some unknown reason, they made Emma Thompson do a Cockney accent for this movie for no actual good reason. Mrs. Potts being Cockney doesn't affect the narrative in any way. She didn't have to sound like that, but they did it anyway. And Emma Thompson sounds awful with this accent. Oh yes, Chip, you'll have your days in the sun again. Why are they gonna do her like that? She's got a very nice, respectable speaking voice. Just let the woman speak. I think the character of Miss Potts in this movie would have been a lot stronger if they just let her speak the way she does. Let's be honest, this movie was freaking gorgeous. I really liked most of the camera work, actually, and the set design was beautiful. It is a lovely spectacle. And that's the end of it. Thank God. Thank you all for joining us in this series. We had fun making it, which is putting it really lightly. It's been a lot of hard work in like eight days and we're exhausted already. <laughs> Vlogmas is always overwhelming like this, but this project specifically was different because we have not done something like this before. We really haven't written so much interchangeably before. Maybe it was just that we only gave ourselves a few weeks before Vlogmas started to write the whole thing, but it was really exhausting writing and editing and filming and repeat for days. Usually when we do a month long project like this, we kind of alternate between content that takes a lot of writing and editing and easier, less scripted content but the effort and energy the writing took was the reason we didn't post a video on Wednesday, actually. We finally got to voice our opinion on this <sighs> dumpster fire. We hope you enjoyed this series and will join us for the rest of Vlogmas slash Hanavlog. We will see you tomorrow.